Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today we're taking a look at these, the Behringer C2 microphones. Small diaphragm condenser mics at a bargain price. And we're going to be comparing them to these, the Neumann KM184s. These are microphones that are well known if you do any kind of studio recordings. Now this is an unfair comparison, but if you know me, you know I happen to love unfair comparisons. Okay, so let's take a look at this. Now, like the Neumanns, you get two microphones, you get two windscreens, two mic clips, you get a mic bar, which you don't get with the Neumanns. This is made out of plastic, and you've got a sort of a flimsy plastic case here. The Neumanns here, in this case, are beautifully made. These are made in Germany, and these cost close to 15 or 1600 US dollars, depending on where you get them. The Behringers, on the other hand, sell for $45. $45. I don't know how they can do it so cheaply. I'm not sure I want to know how they do this so cheaply. So when you get these microphones, they actually are pretty hefty and pretty well made here. And what's happening here is there's a switch on here, which you don't get on the Neumanns. The one is a high pass filter that rolls off the low frequencies, and one is a 10 dB pad in the other position. Strangely, you cannot do both at the same time. Most microphones that have that functionality switch that between two different switches so that you can use them independently of one another, but hey, maybe it's a cost-saving measure. The microphones will be placed in an XY configuration, two feet away from the pianos, input into a Focusrite Scarlett, and into a laptop running Cool Edit Pro. I will do no manipulation of the audio signal whatsoever, but I may do some gain matching to make sure that the levels are roughly equivalent. And if you care about such things, I'm going to do all the Behringer clips first, and then I'm going to follow them with all of the Neumann clips. Uh, okay, hold on. A, a, a time out here. Okay, ran into some issues here. Now, with the Behringers, I had a problem because the mic clips here, uh, I have a, a bunch of mic bars here, and they do not have enough travel in them to tighten all the way down. I tried all of them, and they were loose all the time. Well, okay, uh, let's go ahead and try the mic bar here that's pr pr provided with them, and this, you actually can screw these in, and they do all bottom all the way down, so these can be used. Now the problem here is that there is a threaded nut at the bottom here, and this is threaded for 3 8 inch, and this does ma not match any microphone stand that I have. So it's off to find a photo tripod, which does have a 3 8 inch bolt at them, and we're back in business. So a little bit of manipulation here before we can get these things set up. So I thought I'd show you a couple of other things really fast here. This is a cardioid mic capsule, and this capsule does unscrew, but I left it in there because I don't have any of the others. This switch here that switches between flat and the high pass filter and the 10 dB pad, I'm not super confident in the quality of that switch or its longevity. I'm gonna leave it alone when I do the recording. The other thing to notice is there is a serial number on here, but the serial number is a sticker. <laughs> and not only that, the serial number is the same on both microphones. Now, I've seen this done before, but usually they put an A or a B to distinguish one mic from the other. All right, wait, hold on, hold on. A, a, a time out again. Uh, something else weird happened here. I started to record on the Behringers and noticed immediately that something wasn't quite right. And I'll go ahead and show this to you. This is a normal waveform. This is the Neumanns. And if you know audio recording and you know pro audio, these waveforms will look very familiar to you. If you've never looked at these kinds of things before, it's not hard to figure out. The timeline of the audio clip runs left to right. One channel is on the top. The other channel is on the bottom. You can see where the beats are, and you can see that some notes are louder than others. This is a normal looking waveform. Here's the waveform coming out of the Behringers, and I have no idea what that is. 
I started to wonder if there was something wrong with my equipment because they didn't sound very good either. Now I've been doing this for 20 years. I've never seen waveforms like that. There must be some audio engineer out there who has more experience than me. Please tell me if you know what that is. Okay, so I just started to package these things up and return them. Obviously I've gotten a defective sample. Just on a whim, I decided to hook them up and power them up again. When I did it a second time, the waveforms looked much better like this. I don't know what happened. Maybe they just had to be broken in. Maybe something was stuck somehow, but I was able to continue on with the test. So here we go. Finally to the, to the audio clips, you're going to hear three short clips and I'll see you back here in two minutes and 34 seconds. This is the Behringer C2s. This is the Behringer C2s. These are the Neumann KM184s. These are the Neumann KM184s. What'd you think? You know, I had somebody say to me once that most people watching these videos are going to be doing so on their phones or on their tablets. And because of that, the audio quality of all the stuff that we obsess about doesn't matter. And you know what? I don't know that they're wrong. I played these clips through my phone and I heard very little difference. But when I played it on a desktop system, when I had them on good headphones, I have Grados and Sennheisers around here. Yes, the difference was not very hard to hear. The Behringers are hard and glassy. They're not very smooth sounding. The Neumanns are a much more refined sound, as you would expect given the price. I mean, you could buy 35 sets of these Behringers for the price of one of those Neumanns. And just to give you an idea of just how inexpensive this is like this the mic clip from the Neumann this thing if you lose or break this thing one of these cost $89 by itself so we really can't fault the Behringers for not having anywhere near the level of sound quality but you know for podcasting or for casual video or audio uses it should be just fine now am I planning on keeping these things yes I think I will I'm not upset about any of this I got my $45 worth at the same time, I'm not sure I would bring these things to anything resembling a critical application, even as a backup. 
I have no idea what was going on there in the beginning, whether that was something that just happened because they were new, or maybe that problem's going to return. I can't take that risk, but I'll keep these things around in case somebody wants to hear them or play with them. Now, let's say you want small diaphragm condenser microphones, but you don't want to spend the money for the Neumanns. I get that. I'll give you some recommendations here. I'll give you two recommendations and a dark horse candidate. None of this stuff will be a surprise to anybody who knows pro audio. If you want a less expensive version of the Neumann KM184s, get the Rode NT5s. I had a pair of those here. I sold them. I shouldn't have sold them. I'll probably get a, another pair at some point in the future. The other recommendation, if you can take a large diaphragm condenser microphone, are the Audio-Technica AT2020s. They're $99 a piece and they sound phenomenally good for the price. And in fact, I have a pair of those set up in the other room and when I don't feel like setting up everything else around here or the Neumanns are packed away, I have no problem using the AT2020s. The dark horse candidate I'm going to give you are the AKG P170s, a slightly longer form factor and I see hardly anybody talking about these microphones, but again, for about the same price as the AT2020s, you get a small diaphragm condenser, very nice performance for the price. Between those three alternative recommendations, if I had to pick only one, it would be the Audio-Technica AT2020s. Just a workhorse mic, great value, great performance, even without, regardless of the price. Okay, so there you have it. A look at the Behringer C2 microphone. I hope this has helped you to decide if this microphone is right for you. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.